Battle of Kadesh. The greatest chariot battle in history that ended the Bronze Military Age. Can you imagine the two most powerful military powers in the world facing each other in combat? That is precisely what happened in the year 1274 BC, when the Egyptian and Hittite empires displayed all their bellicosity in the greatest chariot battle in history. This is one of the most transcendent battles in history, as it left unprecedented results and records. This event even led to the first peace treaty between two nations on record. What led to the two most powerful empires in the world to lay down their arms and sign an armistice? Let's find out. Background. 1200 BC witnessed a huge series of events important to the course of history, as it saw the end of the Bronze Age, the fall of great empires and civilizations, the end of the world known up to that time, and the birth of a new world. Egyptians and Hittites lived in an excellent present, since both empires enjoyed a military strength superior to the rest of the empires of the Near East. This military parity sowed in both empires a need to subdue the rival, so that tension was constantly growing between the highest rulers of each civilization. In addition, the borders that they had in common made this tension grow more and more, but the imminent war was postponed due to different agreements that were carried out. Although some Hittite invasions to Egyptian lands are dated 50 years before the battle that gives rise to this video, the unsustainable peace agreements between the two most powerful empires in the world would come to an end when both kings set their sights on the same territory, Kadesh. The importance of Kadesh. Kadesh was an adjoining territory that bordered the frontiers of both empires, so it represented a great opportunity to extend their territory and gain an advantage over their rival. Although this was more than enough reason to conquer Kadesh, the real importance of the Syrian territory was its incredible location in relation to trade. Kadesh was located in what is now Syrian territory, and served as a meeting, crossing, and negotiation point. If the Egyptians wanted to consolidate their power, it was essential to conquer Kadesh, a mercantile and military crossroads of the ancient world due to the enormous amount of resources that watered the place. Controlling this territory meant dominating the region, since the empire that managed to control trade in Syria would be able to levy huge duties and customs taxes on merchants. In the Kadesh trade network circulated all kinds of resources and raw materials such as glass, copper, tin, precious metals and woods, jewellery, porcelain, and much more. As if these reasons were not enough for the powers to want to control the territory, Syria could be the perfect military base to destroy the rival empire, as it was located in the middle of both territories. Egyptian Army In command of the Egyptian army was Pharaoh Ramses II, who assembled the largest army to fight at Kadesh. Egypt had become a military state, as the army received a gigantic number of recruits. The reason for this event is simple, and is due to what had happened a few years earlier in the empire. The state began to greatly reward the soldiers of the army due to the great results they had in the campaigns of conquest and expansion of the empire. For this reason, the pharaohs considered it pertinent to reward the recruits monetarily and socially, so that they would increase their motivation and maintain their enthusiasm when it came to conquering territories. Among these benefits granted by the pharaoh, there was the possibility of social promotion, even being able to be part of the nobility. This reached its peak at the end of the 18th dynasty. Before the reign of Ramses I, who initiated the 19th dynasty, and Seti I, his son, there was a period of dictatorship in which the generals of the army had proclaimed themselves pharaohs of the empire. This was instilled in the peasants of the empire, who found in the army a way to escape from the mediocre and poor way of life that afflicted their ancestors. For this reason, the Egyptian army was numerous and implacable. It was organised mainly in four divisions, which in turn were divided into more detachments. Hittite Army What we know as the Hittite Army was in reality an armed force that was formed by uniting all the recruited confederations of the gigantic empire, to which vassal states were also added. The army was organised as the great majority of armed forces of the Bronze Age, that is to say, around the chariots. 
these chariots were manned by three soldiers, whom Pharaoh Ramses pejoratively called women soldiers because of their habit of wearing long hair. To the left of the chariots was the squire, who was in charge of protecting his companions. To the right was the spearman, who broke the enemy ranks. And in the centre was the chariot driver, who used both hands to drive. But Egyptian records also detail another type of chariot, which belonged to the vassals of the Hittite Empire. These chariots had only two crew members on board. The other important part of the Hittite army was the infantrymen, who wielded a bronze sickle-shaped sword and a battle axe, also made of bronze. Declaration of War Although there is no documentary evidence, different indirect sources point out that both empires understood that legally they would not reach an agreement, so that they had to let the gods decide. That is, they had to meet on the battlefields. Having exhausted the diplomatic instances, the pharaoh Ramses II led the advance of his army towards the battlefield, directing the divisions by different places. Prelude the Egyptians intended to arrive before their opponents on the battlefield, as this was a common military practice during the Bronze Age. Before arriving at the site, they encountered two Bedouins who gave false information to the Egyptian pharaoh. They claimed to Ramses II that the Hittites were many days away from the site of Kadesh, which encouraged the pharaoh to take the city, despite the warnings of his advisors. Battle the first Egyptian squadron arrived at Kadesh and quickly began to set up camp to await the other three squadrons. Ramses II ordered his soldiers to dig a perimeter moat to form a kind of fortress, which was also common in Bronze Age combat. After again interrogating the Bedouins and subjecting them to torture, Ramses II heard the news he did not want to hear. The Hittites were fully prepared to attack just a few miles away. These Bedouins had been sent by the Hittite king to give false information so they could attack by surprise. Their plan worked, as they were able to violently attack the Egyptian camp while Ramses II waited for the rest of his men to arrive. His attack was extremely effective, but not as effective as the king would have wished, as Ramses ordered the defence almost instantly after the Bedouins told him the true intentions of the Hittite king. Muatali, the Hittite king, was almost cut short by his own men, as they became overconfident and began to loot the Egyptian camp instead of taking advantage and ending the battle quickly. The Egyptian army was able to reorganise and resist the onslaught of the enemy, and they slowly made the transition from defence to attack, and the battle became balanced for both sides. When the rest of the Egyptian soldiers arrived to the combat, the Hittites began to be in trouble since all their strategy resolved around the heavy chariots that were only effective at the moment of breaking lines. The Hittites fled to avoid a massacre and took refuge in their camp. End of the battle. The battle can be considered a draw, as the Egyptians managed to drive out the Hittites, but they took heavy casualties and could not hold Kadesh for long, as the Hittites could easily regain the territory. Therefore, both monarchs proposed a truce, which originated the first peace document between two nations. Treaty of Kadesh The Battle of Kadesh gave rise to the Treaty of Kadesh, which is the first peace treaty in history. This treaty is perfectly preserved in the Museum of Istanbul. It was written on silver plates in Akkadian language and hieroglyphics. Sources describing the battle as mentioned before, this battle was described in detail by Ramses II, who had the battle commemorated on the walls of five temples. In addition, there are different Egyptian works that allude to this battle. According to many historians, it is the only battle of antiquity where the tactics and strategies of both warring sides are known. We have developed the battle with a very superficial criterion, since there are very interesting details that we have not been able to include due to time constraints. If you want to know more about such an incredible and transcendent combat as the Battle of Kadesh, we invite you to post it in the comments. Likewise, if you have data or opinions that you consider have been omitted, you can comment respectively. Don't close the video yet! Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us grow and keep making much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.